Good morning. Our passage this morning is John 4, verses 23 and 24. When our oldest son was 18 years old, he was reading a book for his Bible class, and he asked us, Do you know what God desires of us above all else? God desires our worship. He went on to read the author's words. Jesus' famous statement in John 4.23 that the Father seeks worshipers is unparalleled. For nowhere in the entire corpus of Holy Scripture do we read of God's seeking anything else from a child of God. God desires worship above all else. End of quote. So this morning, I want to talk to you about worship. So let's start with reading John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24. Verse 23. But an hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Now, there are several Greek and Hebrew words for worship. But in this verse, the word for worship is the Greek word proskuneo, which means to worship, to show respect, to prostrate before. Another word for worship is the Hebrew word shakah, which means to bow down, to humbly beseech, to do reverence, and adore God. This is the word that we see in Psalm 95. I want to read to you verses 1 through 7 of that psalm. O come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In whose hand are the depths of the earth? The peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, his, for he it was he who made it. His hands formed the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are his people. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. The psalmist's words here, come, let us worship and bow down, should be the heartbeat of every believer. In order to worship God in spirit and truth, we must first know him. We must have God dwelling in our hearts. The more you know of God, the more you will treasure and worship him. One author said, Worship is an inward spiritual experience in the heart, not just on Sunday, but every day and all the time in all of life. Is that you? Do you give reverence and honor and respect to God every day in all of life, whether in blessings or trials? Do you desire to obey him, to love him with your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength? Worship is one of the most defining elements of our Christian walk. Worship is treasuring God. It is prizing God above everything and everyone. It is delighting in God. All of these inner responses to God reflect his infinite worth and beauty. That is what worship is designed to do with the supreme worth of God on display. Another author states, the inner essence of worship is to know God truly and then respond from the heart to that knowledge by valuing God, treasuring God, prizing God, enjoying God, being satisfied with God above all earthly things. Paul tells us whether then you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all 
to the glory of God. We are to do all things in the glory of God, treasuring him and reflecting the value of the, the glory of God. Romans 12, 1 says, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. We are to present our bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God. And this worship of God takes place within a heart that has been transformed by Jesus' work on the cross. It is worship in a heart that has become a dwelling place for God. It is worship that is acceptable to God, not conformed to the cultures of this world, but instead revealed in our life, in all of life, of serving and loving and glorifying God in all we say and do. This is why, as believers, we never move away from the gospel. We never stop reminding ourselves of what he did on our behalf. As the hymn goes, Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. Jesus willingly went to the cross for his elect. He did this all while we were still helpless, while we were yet sinners, while we were his enemy. Christ died for us. But God, Paul reminds us, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. As Christians, we know we do not deserve his love and grace and mercy. We deserve God's eternal wrath. But now, because of Jesus, God treats us, the guilty, as if we never committed any of the sins that brought his son to the cross. He treats us as though everything we had ever done was perfect and right and good and true. What kind of God is this? It is the kind of God who deserves our worship in spirit and in truth. So come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. He is our God. <laughs>